everyone, it's Nate here. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about how I learned data science. I know there are a lot of videos out there right now that explain this exact topic, but I feel that everyone's background and journey are different. So I'd like to toss mine into the mix here. As a twist, I want to specifically focus on giving you guys resources you can use to improve your technical skills, and even more specifically, to land your first job in the field. Because that's really the hardest part, right? Landing your first job. Because once you have that, you'll learn all the skills you need so fast that you're not going to need people like me giving you guys advice. So first, I want to say learning data science and being good at it is actually really hard. I never went to school specifically for data science, but I do have a technical engineering background, which makes things just a little bit easier. But even then, it took me years to gain all of the skills needed to be competent at doing data science. And that's because there's a long list of things you need to know to be good at data science. So I'm going to break down the technical concepts that I think you need to know to learn data science and how I think about it or thought about it while I was learning data science. So here are the three main topics. So you have programming, statistics and probability, and product sense. So even within these three big segments here, you can even break it down further. And that's what I'm going to do in the video. But within programming, we have data analysis and machine learning. And then within statistics and probability, you have statistics and probability, but you also have machine learning theory, which is another subset of statistics. And then lastly, product sense is really about understanding the business and understanding the product itself as a business. So if you take these three topics together, it seems like you need to be three people in one, right? You need to be a software engineer, you need to be a mathematician, and you need to be an MBA or a business person. Like, so taken together, it's really hard for one person to have all of these skills. So the question is, how do you learn data science to be proficient enough to land a job? How did I learn data science to be good enough to land a job? So let's dive deeper into this topic. So let's start with the first topic here. It's programming. So programming is probably the hardest and the most time consuming topic to learn for data science. What's hard about programming actually isn't about learning the syntax and how to code. It's actually learning about how to approach problems and implement solutions. And so, and then within programming, you have data analysis and machine learning. So let's start with data analysis first. So when I think about data analysis, I think about pulling and manipulating data and then generating insights and recommendations. So you'll need to learn SQL and another scripting language like Python or R. I actually started out with a programming language called MATLAB and then I went into R and then Python. And so mainly I use Python these days as well as SQL. So in terms of how to get better at programming, everybody's going to tell you to do projects, right? That's how you get better. And I agree with them and we'll talk about this more later in the video. But what I want to do is give you another piece of advice. Uh, this is something I did. So what I did to get better at data science and get better at programming was to do a lot of interview questions to get better. What better way to succeed on an interview and land your first job as a data scientist than to do a ton of interview questions as practice. I think the main benefit here is that you are solving problems that are relevant in the industries and companies that you're interested in working for. So then when you are actually ready to interview, you are basically ready and able to answer any question that they toss at you. And as I've said before, programming isn't just about learning the syntax. There are so many resources out there free and paid that will teach you how to code in SQL and in Python. But the thing is, what people are looking for in interviews and on the job is how you think about solving that problem, right? The approach to it and how you would actually implement it. And this is what you need practice doing. And so for myself, I just did a ton of SQL interview questions to just get better at coding in general. And so like I said before, the twist to this video is that I want to give you guys resources to help you become better data scientists and to learn data science. So in terms of coding platforms that give you interview questions as practice, uh, there are so many platforms out there, and I think the de facto one, the number one that everybody uses is LeetCode. So you guys probably know this already, but LeetCode is tailored for software engineers. 
So you have to take that entire platform with a grain of salt when you're doing their problems. And just a little bit of a promo, and I really won't talk about it again, but that is the real reason why I built Stratascratch. I built it for data scientists. So these are data science interview questions from real companies. So just to close out the data analysis part of this, in addition to projects, I would suggest doing as many relevant interview questions as possible to really understand what companies are looking for in candidates, as well as mastering your technical coding skills in SQL and Python or R or another scripting language. Okay, moving on. So still within the category of programming, we have machine learning. Learning machine learning specifically to me is implementing these models, these machine learning and statistical models in a programming language like Python or R. You'll definitely need to know how to code in one of these language, but what's most important is actually understanding the data science flow to implement these models. This is where I would recommend doing projects. There are so many places right now where you can find projects. I think the most popular platform and resource for that is Kaggle. Go on Kaggle, find a project, grab the data set, install Jupyter Notebooks if you're gonna be using Python and do the project. I think what's really, really important actually is to be able to, as you are doing the project, talk to people, talk to the community to see where you can improve and to get help. I did a ton of projects while I was trying to get better at machine learning and implementing other statistical models. So I think Kaggle is a pretty good resource, but then there's also another new resource out there called confetti.ai. And so the link is actually in the description below. Confetti.ai is a great resource out there for learning machine learning and other technical concepts. They kind of break down the curriculum into sections and they have questions for every single section out there. So it's not really like doing a project where it's like, start to finish, but it's more like answering a bunch of questions that cover all machine learning concepts. So if you understand all of these concepts, you can then apply that to a project that you find on Kaggle. So the last thing I'll say about machine learning, this is kind of where I would spend the bulk of my time of learning data science. And it's, it's not really because you want to learn how to actually implement a machine learning model or a regression model or anything like that but it's really learning the data science workflow when you are trying to complete a project. So what I mean by the data science workflow is being able to pull and manipulate data, doing feature engineering, building and designing features, model implementation, model optimization, and then a recommendation at the end, right? That is the data science workflow from end to end when you're on the job. So being good at that workflow, understanding why you're making certain decisions and the approach you're taking to building that model and the recommendation you're making is something that you're gonna do every day on the job and you need to be good at it. And it takes time to actually be pretty competent on the subject. And this is something that just takes time. All right, so that's it for programming. Let's jump into the second category, statistics and probability. So this is data science in a nutshell, math. Everything in data science is statistics, like machine learning, regressions, designing experiments, because if you're not really doing any of that, then you're really just a business analyst. And so to me, data science is all about statistics. So again, we just talked about machine learning models, right? Implementing ML models. So what is a machine learning model? They're just statistical models. And so as somebody like yourself that builds and implements ML models, you kind of want to know the underpinnings on how they actually work. So for me and how I got better at this, while I was doing these projects and implementing ML models and writing code, I was also reading about the underlying theory of the model I was actually implementing. So if it was a k-means cluster or a random forest, I was actually going online and reading as much as I can about the theory and the math behind these models. This is extremely important because it allows me to understand what the underlying assumptions are in the model, which helped me better clean the data, design my features, and help me develop more accurate models because I knew what the model was really all about. And I'll tell you this, in a data science interview, 
interviewers will 100% ask you about machine learning models and regressions. You might not have to actually implement or code it up in an interview, but they're going to ask you the theory behind it, the assumptions behind these models. Because if you don't know what you're actually doing or why you're actually doing it, then nobody and none of your peers and none of their stakeholders on the job will actually be able to trust your recommendation, right? Because you don't actually know what the model's doing. So understanding the theory and the underpinnings of the model is very, very important in my opinion. So where did I go to learn more about ML theory and regressions? Really the best resources that I found over time is just a collection of sites that I go to to learn about data science. So in terms of regression and machine learning models, I, I think like articles on Medium is a pretty good start. Wikipedia is another trustworthy site. I think over time, you're gonna find your own sites that you trust and like to learn more about data science. But the point is to read a bunch of articles and texts to better understand the theory behind machine learning models and regression models. One other resource I would say in terms of when I want to prepare for an interview, prepare for a data science interview, I like to use brilliant.org. Brilliant.org has a lot of questions on statistics and probability, and that's a major component to any data science interview. So I'll usually use that site to just refresh and brush up on my statistics and probability. So in summary, Statistics and probability is a matter of learning the theory of machine learning and regression models. And you can do this by doing projects and learning how to implement these models, but really supplement that work with reading about the underlying theory of each model that you're implementing. And number two, getting good at interview questions as you prepare for your interview. And again, you can find these interview type questions from a resource that I used to use a lot called brilliant.org. All right, so now the last category in how to learn data science or how I learn data science. The last category is product sense. So this is a non-technical concept that you need to learn to be a good data scientist. What is product sense? So product sense is very similar to product management. It's not quite the same, obviously, but a lot of the concepts and a lot about how you think and what you think are very, very similar. It's looking at the product and making decisions through a business lens. So you're gonna deal with questions like, how would you measure the success of different features of a platform? Or how would you tell if a product is performing well? So you might be asking yourself, why do I even need to know this as a data scientist? I'm here to build models and pull numbers for people. But the other part, the other major part of being a data scientist is making recommendations for your stakeholders to make business impact. Understanding your product, understanding your feature and how it affects the business and what the business is actually trying to do will help you approach and analyze the problem in order to make that recommendation. Because if you're not optimizing for your business, you're optimizing your model. And typically in a real world setting, you don't actually need to have a perfect model in order to make the most business impact. Your peers are gonna be evaluating you on your business impact, not necessarily on how accurate or optimized your model is. So how do you get better at this? How do you get better at product sense? Well, it's very much like getting better at statistics and probability. It requires a lot of reading, but this reading is more about reading product management case studies and understanding how product managers think and make decisions. There are a ton of free resources out there for you. So there are a ton of videos on YouTube that will go over product management, product sense case studies and also mock interviews. And there are platforms out there like Exponent that will help you become a better product manager, which in turn really is helping you better understand product sense as a data scientist. So really what I did again was just read a lot and watch a ton of videos on product management because it translates so well into product sense and understanding how to make decisions for the business. So that's basically it. There is a lot to unpack there, right? So just to summarize, I learned data science by breaking it down into three major topics. It's programming, 
statistics and probability, and product sense. And then within programming and statistics, you have machine learning models, both understanding the theory behind it as well as implementing the model itself. So I guess you can really say there are four topics every data scientist should know. I understand it's hard and it takes a while to get good at it. So just take a look at the resources that I mentioned in this video. I've linked them all in the description below. I've used all of these resources in the past and thought that they were valuable in my journey as a data scientist. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you like content like this. Thanks and see you at the next video.